All right, check it out. T-beam example coming up here. And in this example, we are going to be talking about a cracking moment. We're going to be finding the flexural capacity of this T-beam when we have the balanced steel area, so the balanced moment, you could say. Uh, and we're going to find the flexural capacity with half the balanced steel area. We're going to be using uh, CSA A23.3, so that's the Canadian Concrete Code. And that is similar to or parallel to ACI 318, which is the American Concrete Building Code. All right, so first things first, let's go ahead and label a few of these geometrical things we got going on here. So we got the width of our flange, BF, the height of our flange, and we got our web. And I'll just summarize these different geometry uh, things in this little table here, okay? And if we're finding the cracking moment, we need to know which way that moment is being applied. So it's a T-beam, so the point of a T-beam is to have compression in the flange and tension in the bottom, okay? And to find this cracking moment, we're going to go way back in our, in our minds to recall the bending formula. And the bending stress formula says that sigma equals my over i, all right? So that's the stress sigma, and that's my over i. And we can rewrite that in terms of kind of concrete parameters as fr equals MCR YT over IG, all right? So MCR being the cracking moment, FR being the uh, stress at which the concrete will crack. So that's kind of the rupture stress. And then IG is the moment of inertia. We can just think about it as the overall gross concrete section. And YT is the distance to the tensile fiber from the neutral axis, okay? All right, so I went ahead and calculated the rupture stress for the concrete. It's around 4 MPa. And next up is Y bar from the top of the concrete. So this is just a weighted average of the centroids of the flange and the web. All right, so we just take their areas, times them by their centroids, divide it by the total area, just your classic weighted average. Then um, we can solve for Y bar, so it's about 305 millimeters. And we can back calculate what yt will be. Because as I'm showing here, y bar is the distance from the top to the centroid, but yt is the distance from the centroid to the tension face. And that's the value we need for our MCR equation. All right. Lastly, the last piece of the puzzle we need is this gross moment of inertia. No, it's not gross because it's nasty. It's gross because it's referring to the entire thing. I don't know who came up with that. Anyway, so we got the flange, moment of inertia, the web, and the two parallel axis parts, all right? And it's a huge, huge number, so we use some scientific notation. Okay, we're ready to calculate MCR, so we'll just flip it all together in the formula that we already created for ourselves from the bending stress formula, okay? So it's just 3.8 MPa times this big moment of inertia and divided by yt, the distance to the tension face. And we get 160 kilonewton meters. Note that I divided that by 10 to the power of 6 to switch the units around. But we're done the first part of the problem. So nice work, all right? Check that off, and let's move on to the second part. All right, now we want to find the flexural capacity of the section with the balanced area of steel, ASB. And I've already given us the stress block factors up here for 40 MPa. So how can we find ASB? Well, maybe we want to use row balance. After all, it is ASB over BD. So if we find row balance, then we can just back calculate ASB. But there's a caveat. What if our depth of our stress block is greater than the depth of the flange? OK, so we have to rely on CB, the balanced neutral axis, to get this, all right? So the key to this question is knowing that CB, the balanced neutral axis, that works independently of what type of beam you're using. The formula for that never changes because it's based on strain compatibility. All right, so here's what our section looks like at this balanced failure. And here we have our actual strain diagram here. And we can see that epsilon Cu is at the top. That means the concrete is crushing. And at the bottom, we have epsilon Y. And that means that the steel is yielding. So we can actually use similar triangles here to solve for CB, all right? So we know that CB divided by epsilon CU is going to equal D divided by 
epsilon cu plus epsilon y. And we have all these values except for cb, so let's solve for it. So it turns out CB is equal to about 445 millimeters, all right? And that is greater than the depth of the flange. So it's a good thing we did this approach, all right? So now that we have CB, we can solve for AB, which is the depth, the balance depth of the stress block. Recall that the stress block, that's that, that equivalent block that we can sub in for the actual parabolic shape of the concrete stress strain in compression there, right? So A ends up being about 388 millimeters. And now that we have A, we can actually, for, we can actually go ahead and solve for our, our moment, right? The moment capacity of this balanced failure. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be CFL, which is the concrete resultant from the flange, times its moment arm, plus CW, which is the concrete resultant from the web, times its moment arm, all right? So let's draw those out in the diagram. CFL is acting right in the middle of the flange, and CW is acting over the rest of the stress block depth A, which leaks into the web here. All right, so there's CW. And don't forget, if we're going to have this stress diagram here, we may as well make it proper and add in the steel stress, FY, as well as the resultant T. Now, T didn't show up in the MR equation because we summed moments about T. All right? All right, so let's move this MR equation over. Okay, so now it's time to actually solve for CFL and CW. So that's alpha 1 phi C F prime C, and then it's just the length and height over which these resultants are acting. So for CFL, it's HF BF, and for CW, it's the width of the web BW, and then A minus HF, okay? That's a little tricky. Look at it carefully, all right? So we solve for these two values, and we're going to keep everything in newtons, right? So it works out nicely, newtons, millimeters, MPA. Our final MR value that we get, well, let's first just grab these moment arms. D minus A over 2, that's 700 minus 50. And then this other huge mess, stare at that for a bit if you don't see that right away. Uh, we end up getting MR of 2,410 kilonewton meters, all right? So that's obviously way above our cracking moment. And it's a substantial moment that this T-beam can resist. But the story is not over. Now we want to find the flexural capacity with half of the balanced steel area, all right? So this part's going to be a bit quicker. I'm going to go fast because you know what? You guys have a pause button, all right? So from previous, we know that CFL and CW, we had solved for those values. And we know that T would have to be equal to those values because sum of all the force in the X equals zero, right? All right, so... We could just divide that T in half to get our new T, right? Because we're going to have half the steel area. But let's go ahead and solve for that balanced area to get a feel for how much steel this actually is. All right, so if we plug that in, we see that we had around 12,000 millimeters squared of steel. So quite a bit of steel. If we only put 50% of that in, then our tensile resultant will be cut in half. So we do the math on that, and we got about 2,000 kilonewtons, just a bit over, all right? Now here's where you have to start paying attention. Notice that this new T that we have, this new tensile resultant from all the steel, it's less than CFL, the force in the concrete, if the whole flange were in compression. So that tells us that the whole flange is not in compression and A is less than HF, and we're dealing with a rectangular analysis in this case, okay? So we'll, we'll ditch the CFL and the CW approach. Now we'll just have a T for tension and a C for compression resultant because we just have a plain old rectangular analysis. So we know we can just use equilibrium, solve for A, and then plug everything into our moment equation, summing the force times the moment arm about one of the other forces. All right, so I've done that here, and the final value we get is 1,392 kilonewton meters. So if we're gonna summarize what we did here, we see that by using only 50% of the area of steel, we still achieve 58% of the MR. So it's kind of an interesting conclusion here. So we'll cap it off with a few bubble letters, you know, why not celebrate? It's nice to be artsy every once in a while. What can I say? I'm talented, right? All right. All right. See you guys later. All right. Take it easy.